All right, I swear that I'm not just going to be recording these PC Sherpa intros when I'm sick. The last one I uploaded was also when I was sick, and I'm not going to keep that up, I swear. Welcome to another episode of PC Sherpa, the series where I take one of you guys into a call with me to figure out your performance issues. Today's one, we got a pretty beefy setup with a 4090 and a 7800X 3D. All the specs are listed on screen, and we're going to be trying to de-bloat this guy's operating system in this video because he had a lot of... Crap. If this video helps you, or if you just like watching this sort of content, please do hit the buttons down below. It really helps support the channel, and maybe it'll help me not get sick. And if you want to participate in the live streams, I do them every Friday at 6.30 p.m. CST, and every Sunday at 1.30 p.m. CST, again, when I'm not super sick. Also, if you'd like to help outside of that, there is my amazing Discord. Link is in the description down below. Uh, it, it's a really great place to get some help with your performance questions for Tarkov or some of the other games that I've covered on this channel as well. But anyway, it's enough of that. Let's get straight into the video. You have, what is it, 7800, or not 7800, um, 7200 megahertz yeah, CL34. Double checked, yeah. I honestly think part of the stutter might be coming from that. Have you been having this issue with other games? It's, okay. not, it's not a stutter, that's not me. I don't, it's just weird. Um, I don't know much about like the percentages, but like I'd imagine like I could get higher frames with lower settings, like higher usage, like the 40%, like super low usage on that. It, Confuses me. First off, the 4090 is extremely powerful, like crazy powerful in comparison to like running Tarkov. Like it is overkill, um, especially if we're running at anything that's below 4K. Even if you crank the settings in Tarkov, you part of the time will probably be struggling to get that to even get close to 100% usage. Um, you'll really have to pump things up and then probably play it like native 4K to really, or get high refresh rate 1440p uh, and have a CPU that be able to do that um, in order to get that to be maxed out um, in terms of usage percentages. Um, but that's not really the most important thing uh, when we're talking about Targos performance as a whole. You don't really need to pay attention to, well, I should say it like this. You don't have to think of like i need to improve gpu usage like you don't need to set that as like a goal to like have it, it can be lower um and you can still get plenty acceptable performance if you want let's just go through the basics first let's just check your settings and make sure there isn't anything super crazy if you want i mean we basically have very similar builds so i can just take you into like an offline co-op without AI and we can just sit somewhere and then we can cross compare because we have the same CPU. So, um, yeah. All right. Okay. So we're, so we're playing a native 4k and we have, okay. So high shadows, it, basically everything's fine. It's not anything crazy. If anything, I did notice, uh, and I put a correction after I made my settings guide for this wipe. Because I didn't realize it at first, but there is more than normal FPS decrease with high quality color on. Um, after I went back and looked at it later on, I don't know if that's still the case right now. Um, it was like a couple months ago, so I would probably disable that. But I mean, besides that, everything else is looking okay. It doesn't seem too crazy. It seems pretty all right. I don't know if you have any like expertise with like Nvidia settings too. There's basically the, to be honest with you i made a video talking about this most of the stuff in here I, I explained a lot of it but most of it it either doesn't apply to most new games um or it's purely placebo in terms of like any real performance impact um so oh well that's a part of the cul culprit probably we'll talk about that in a second i already see i already <laughs> i already see some some culprits but we'll uh oh yeah what i'll do is we'll go into an offline cooperate together. We'll go to the same spot, we'll look down the same street, and we'll see if there's any improvement to be had. Because my situation is basically ideal, besides having Discord open. Um, I basically have nothing else that would be uh, impacting my performance right now. You think like t texture, shadows, high, like that's probably good. I mean, it wasn't maxing out my GPU there, but I've had it maxed out before with like HBO and SSR on max. You would, yeah. Well, here's okay. So here's the thing, basically, right? When you you're, don't notice much difference, so like frames wise, it's like as long as 
you can okay you can kind of think of it like this right where if you are at less than 100 percent gpu usage let's say you're at like 60 percent and you're enabling things like hbo ssr but if you're disabling stuff like that or not disabling but enabling stuff like that you're just basically upping the amount of work that the gpu has to do those settings aren't really impacting any of the work that the cpu has to do in order to prepare the frame so let's say we're, if we're running at like 100 fps my gpu usage is at 50 percent my cpu is the bottleneck uh, and i'll break down the cpu bottlenecks later um but let's just assume that the cpu is the bottleneck if i just crank up HBAO to the point where I get to 95% usage, but I don't lose any frame rate. I'm not getting to the point where I'm GPU bottleneck now. We're just basically at a balanced scenario in this ideal environment, right? Then you're basically in the ideal scenario where your GPU has basically the perfect amount of work. Your CPU is doing the perfect amount of work. And then based on where you're looking, it's just like variably swapping between being a CPU and GPU bottleneck, but you will get to a- Is it about even or the GPU is- yeah. Well, don't think of the CPU usage. That I'll break down in a minute. That's like a separate thing. So don't think of like the CPU usage as like being like, oh, if I get to 100% CPU usage, it's a CPU bottleneck. It's it's different. If you push the GPU usage up, quote unquote, past 100%, right? To the point where you're cranking up settings even when it's at 100%. Like if I put shadows to high, when I'm at 100% GPU usage, I will see an FPS redu reduction because I'm GPU bound. But if I do the same thing and I'm at 50% GPU usage, my GPU usage just goes up to 65 and I don't lose any frame rate. It's like run to run variance because I'm CPU bottlenecked and upping that specific setting in this example doesn't hurt the CPU bound performance. Or to put it in other terms, there are other things in the game that are limiting your performance on the CPU side that isn't shadow quality, HBAO. SSR or whatever, right? Yeah, I was. I, I feel like other people have to be in this boat, but it's like there are a lot of people because they're just like get crazy systems for this game, and it's don't expect well. You'll get it. you'll get people who are like, yeah, I bought a forty ninety, and then I got my a CPU that's basically not to snuff, or they just get like a crazy GPU upgrade, and they have like a really poor CPU, and then they don't see that improvement, right? And that's mm -hmm. just because of a CPU bottleneck. But we'll get to that. Um, right now in this scenario. I'm not GPU bottlenecked at all, and I'm getting a hundred, like between 115 and 120 FPS. Where are you at right now? Rocking steady 70, 80, 82. To that 76. is crazy. That is a crazy difference I'm right now. 40 to 40 and 60 on the CPU and GPU. Yeah, we definitely know something's wrong here. Okay, I did not expect that at all. Okay, so we actually got something to fix here. Yeah, you are streaming. Close that, and we'll see. Yeah, like plus two on the peak. So, man, okay. You can kind of think of it, and this is where I'll just like break down basically your your bottlenecks. You can think of if you if you have less than 100% GPU usage, you can be pretty sure that you're CPU bottlenecked. And within a CPU bottleneck, I sort of bundle a couple different issues together. And since you have Process Lasso downloaded, this is actually a perfect time for me to explain it. So if you pull that up real quick with this situation, right? There's a couple different things. Firstly, you can have a scenario where you have one thread, basically, that is maxing out your performance. Um, so basically for gaming, not all games and basically most games right now don't they don't utilize all threads on your CPU for performance. Typically, um, and this is sort of changing now with uh, some of the Real Engine 5 titles, but uh, for the for a long time, there has been either one thread or a couple of threads on your CPU uh, that have managed making the package for your GPU, the work package for your GPU. Uh, and that's they call those the render thread or render threads. Uh, and Tarkov is one of those titles. So Tarkov, I believe, only has one thread that is in control of making the work package for the GPU because of that you may get a situation where you get 100% usage on one core and that's a CPU bottleneck. Also, you can have a situation where basically your whole CPU is maxing out uh, just because you have a really weak CPU. That's still a CPU bottleneck. You're just maxing out every thread and then you're done. That typically only happens with like quad core CPUs though from like like the seventh gen of Intel and stuff like that. So typically you don't really see that anymore. Um, in your situation, you're getting close to 100% usage on some threads sometimes, but 
you are like close to like 80% on some of those threads. Personally, that looks to me like it's a cache slash memory bandwidth issue. For a cache slash memory related bandwidth bottleneck, when you're in that sort of bottleneck, you're basically waiting, the, the CPU is waiting for things that it needs to do what it needs to do to get into the memory that's locally stored on the chip. So as you know, when you bought your 7800X3D, one of the fancy marketing claims like, oh, we have this 3D vCache technology and it's, it's a lot of data that can be put on the chip. <laughs> Basically, that data that they can put on the chip where it's in the L1, L2, and L3 caches in that order, um, the L3 cache is the really big one, by the way, the 3D vCache is. For that, that is much faster memory than your RAM. So when it needs to complete instructions, it will sometimes swap things in and out of the cache back and forth from your RAM. So in a sense, sometimes you can either get bottlenecked by the speed of that transfer in particular, and that can relate to either the speed of things moving out of your cache or the speed of things moving out of your RAM. I personally think that part of this issue is your RAM speed currently. I didn't think it would cause this much of an issue, but I think the fact that it's not in sync with the Infi Infinity Fabric, and we'll talk about that, and that's where I start to get fuzzy in my details as well, because I'm not a professional like memory overclocker, but I know the basics. Um, that might be part of the reason. I, I will say as well, um, I think there are more issues here than just the memory. Another thing, um, if you sort by process name on process lasso, there's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit in the background. And also, there is, you do have it configured to like not use physical, or only use physical cores for Tarkov. So, we'll make some adjustments here. I won't ask you to necessarily uninstall some of the software, but I'm going to follow some of my guidance in a previous video I made about CPU Affinity to maybe sort some of those processes out of the way of the game and possibly improve performance there as well. Because you had IQ, you have Blitz, you have Steel Series GG, you have... Uh, yes, the series and Blitz are definitely. I've had several instances of people who've had Steel Series Sonar and Steel Series GG in particular experience drastically worse performance than with Steel Series removed. I typically don't do this um, for eight core CPUs, but in a situation like this, it might be helpful. Um, you may want to take ooh, take Tarkov off of the. Uh, first core so first go to escape from tarkov go to cp affinity always and then select cp affinity and then in here um wants you to uncheck uncheck everything first off just hit all yeah okay actually oh, that's perfect hit all again check all for both and then in the first column where it says cpu zero and cpu one take it off of those then next what I would do is sort by name again, and then I would take, and this is going to make some of these programs slower, like their interfaces, I want to be clear, but this is, we can adjust where okay, things we're, are placed. We're one monitor gang. <laughs> yeah. So first, I, let's scroll down to find Steel Series first, that culprit. Um, all of this, let's take all of this, so click on the first one, the top, Steel Series engine. You don't have to do it that way, you can shift click from the top to the bottom, so you can click engine and then shift click sonar. There you go. And then right click any of them. CPU Affinity. Always select CPU Affinity and then uncheck everything. And only place on the first two. Yep, perfect. And, and okay. So now we've isolated that so that anything that Steel Series is doing through those tasks at least, if it's CPU wise, they're isolated from each other. And then I would do the same thing with stuff like Blitz. Mm -hmm. Um and Razor Synapse, that was another culture, culprit that I've had in the past. Uh, and then we'll see what that does first and foremost. So that's that's the first thing. What are we looking like in Tarkov now? Ooh. Oh, yep, yeah, we're at 100, 100 FPS. Now. Yep, there we go. 10, 10, 15 right there. Yep, that's a good start. So I, right now, looking at the same spot, I'm sitting at like 129, 130. So we still got some room to go. It looks like FPS on both of ours increased by like five to eight. So there was still some improvement from doing that on your end, but it wasn't uh, super, wasn't the oh, crap time. It was like, like 70, 65 to the lowest, 65 to 85 basically to like, I think it's like 88. So. 
That is significant. Now, this isn't exactly everything that we did during this stream, but I wanted to specifically highlight how this deep loading process and how moving tasks around may actually get you significantly more performance, even if you think your system is fairly debloated. If you'd like any additional help, I've made a couple other videos in the past regarding this issue that I'll leave down in the description below. Also, make sure you join the Discord, which is linked down below if you'd like additional help. There's a bunch of amazing people in there who can help you out. And of course, if you'd like to ask me any questions live, make sure to join my streams on YouTube or Twitch. But for now, thank you for watching, and this is Clem, clocking out. Later.